What do you call a magician that's lost his magic? Ian. <laughs> I absolutely love that one. Don't forget, comment your dad jokes down below. Right, so hello again, everybody, and welcome back. As promised, we're going to start covering all types of streaming devices on the channel, and today, we're going to have a look through all the Roku settings, some that you may not know are there, some that may be hidden, or some that you didn't know you could change. So let's jump straight over now. So that being said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and let's crack on. Right, so I've got my Roku device plugged in and that. I've not really been a fan of Roku devices, but I know they are very popular. Now, the reason I've never been a big fan of them is because of the limitations when sideloading different apps. But that doesn't mean they're not good devices. My daughter absolutely loves it. And one more thing as well, I do apologise. I've got the man flu. Can't talk really good, but I still want to make videos. <laughs> so when you're on your Roku device... Like I said, the thing we're going to look through is the settings. Now, previously, we've done videos like this on the Amazon Fire Stick, and they are very popular, and a lot of people do appreciate those videos, and that's why I'm making this one today. So we're going to go down this list inside settings until we see privacy. Now, this is the first part. Now, if I go across on privacy, you're going to see it says advertising, and then you can see it says limit third-party ad tracking. Now, for you, this may say personalized ads it depends which device you're using but then as we can see in the box next to it request third-party channels to stop using your device's advertising id to build profiles for advertising purposes or target you with interest-based ads on this device and then it says ads served by roku are not affected by this setting so we can click on where it says limit third-party ad tracking and it says please know your ads may not be relevant to your interests you will still see the same number of ads, but it will show you ads that aren't that relevant to you. But if I click on where it says yes, it's not going to tick it off. We've got to make sure we click don't personalize my ads. That'll tick that box and it'll no longer use your device's advertising ID, meaning it won't share what you've been doing with different apps as well. Now, if we go back, another thing we can see here is microphone and it does say channel microphone access, prompt, always allow or never. Now, it does say there, if you leave it on prompt, when a channel first tries to access the microphone on your remote and or mobile device, a prompt will ask for your permission. Now, I know not a lot of people are a fan of this and do choose just to click on never allow because with microphone access as well, like we see from Amazon, it does tend to save recordings to get used to what you sound like to be able to better serve what you ask for. So like I say, a lot of people choose to just never allow. So those are the main two settings inside your Roku device that a lot of people tend to change. Another thing as well, if we go down to system, you see we've got a few options inside here, but if we go down, you've got software update. Now, most of the time, this will do it automatically, but if not, you can click on it, click check now, and as you can see, I've got an update, and I think that update were quite old because this Roku's been sat behind me for about six months. But if you're somebody that uses the device often, I would say make sure to keep it up to date so it works as it should. Another thing inside system as well is, we have got obviously the system restart. If you just want to give it a reboot, you can do it there. But we've also got a guest mode as well. Now this can come in handy for if you've got guests coming round, probably why it's called guest mode. <laughs> or if you own something like a BNB, you can set up a guest profile. Well, it actually tells us underneath, guest mode lets your visitors log in and enjoy their own subscription channels on your Roku device. You can select the date of departure and they'll be automatically signed out on that date. So some people might find this very useful. And then underneath that, you can see we've got advanced system settings. Factory reset is obviously to wipe it clean like it's brand new. It gets rid of everything, including your account on that device. So your factory reset, if you were going to sell your Roku device or if you were having issues with it, you wanted to start again. Right, so another setting we've got is network. Now, if we go across to network and to bandwidth saver, this might come in handy for people who have a cap on their internet or data. So as you can see here, if you haven't used the remote in four hours, a message will be displayed asking if you are still watching. If there is no response, the channel will stop streaming and save your network bandwidth. Now, there's really no harm in leaving this on because four hours is a long time to not use a remote on your streaming device. But if you don't want it ever to display that, we can just turn that off. But what would be a good option on there is if you could set 
a time limit or the amount of data the device uses. So that's just another setting there. Now, something else we've got is theme. Now, inside your theme, you've got different wallpapers and you've also got different screen savers. Now, your wallpapers, I don't know. Should we change it to this daydream? We'll get a couple of moments. I've not changed this before. I'm not sure what this one is. Click on home. You're going to see it gives it a different look. If you prefer that style, it might be something that interests you. But for me, I'm going to go back into wallpapers, back to Roku, set as wallpaper and put it back to what it was. You've also got some featured wallpapers as well, just to mix it up a little bit. You've got screen savers as well. Some people are fans of these. Some people don't like them at all. Now you can change this by going to screen saver start time. You can disable it so it'll never start that screen saver at all. Or you can change the amount of time until the screen saver starts. So theme is just a good way of personalizing your Roku device to how you like it. Display type. Mine's currently set to automatic, which is 1080p for this device. Or I think it's because I'm recording it. But some people may find that they have issues when it's set to automatic. It may be trying to use an adaptive display type and keep changing. So if you have that issue, you can come in here and change it to manually just pick the display type that you want instead of automatic. We go down one, we've got some subtitle settings here. Now I was surprised how much you can change in terms of the subtitles change the size change the edge effect change the style which i think is quite a good option for those that are hard of hearing or if you've got a family full you've got a lot of kids you can't really hear so you like to read the subtitles as well i do like that you can customize them subtitles to that extent next up you've got audio now for me personally the menu volume all the clicking and that i don't mind it but if you want to turn that off we can just click off and they'll no longer make that noise when you're moving around. Apple AirPlay and HomeKit is going to be good for people who are in the iOS ecosystem. If you use that, let me know in the comments section down below. And they've also got some legal notices. Now, something else you can do as well is on your home screen, if you've got an application, you can click on the star button on your remote, and it's going to come up like this. So this is for Netflix. You can move the channel around. You can restart it, remove it, or you can check for updates with that application as well. If I click on move channel, like you see, you can move it around your homepage and personalize that how you want. So yeah, like I say, I apologize about the man flu, blocked nose, probably sound irritating, but we just keep going, don't we? Now, like I did say previously, we are going to start covering more and more streaming devices once again. We have been very heavy on the fire sticks lately, so we're going to start spreading it around Roku's, Chromecasts, some video shields, Android TV, all that sort of stuff. But let me know in the comment section down below, do you own or use a Roku device? And is there anything you do on that that I haven't mentioned in this video that you might recommend others do as well? So right, that's it for this one. I'm going to go and get a nice hot cup of tea. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And I'll see you soon. Ta-da! <coughs> oh, I've gone.